Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the situation involving Jordan Peterson and the potential loss of his professional license? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of Jordan Peterson, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Jordan Peterson was born in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, on June 12, 1962. He grew up in Fairview. Jordan had a decidedly negative view of religion when he was a teenager. He claimed that, quote, religion was for the ignorant, weak, and superstitious, unquote. He wanted a left-wing revolution to occur, but over time, his position would change dramatically. Jordan graduated from high school in 1979 and went to college. He eventually transferred to the University of Alberta. He wanted to be a corporate lawyer. Jordan became fascinated with George Orwell, the Cold War, and the possibility of a nuclear apocalypse. In 1982, he graduated with a bachelor's degree in political science. In 1984, he earned a second bachelor's degree from the same school this time in psychology. In 1985, he attended McGill University and eventually earned a PhD in clinical psychology. In 1993, Jordan moved to Massachusetts, where he was a professor at Harvard University. He was initially interested in the topic of alcohol use disorder, but switched over to personality theory. He took a job as a professor at the University of Toronto in 1998. Jordan Peterson was productive, publishing a number of articles, treating clients, and he was occasionally featured on television. He started posting videos on YouTube in 2013. Jordan Peterson would achieve fame, or notoriety, in September of 2016 when he released videos criticizing Bill C-16. This bill proposed to expand the definition of discrimination to include gender identity or expression. Jordan suggested that he was defending free speech by opposing this bill. His detractors implied that he was promoting hate. No matter who was right, wrong, or indifferent, Jordan Peterson skyrocketed to popularity, especially with conservatives. He was viewed as an intellectual who would stand up to other intellectuals. He was willing to challenge the liberal system that created him. Whether he wanted it or not, Jordan became a hero to the right. He claims that he's not conservative, Rather, he is classically liberal. Jordan's YouTube channel grew tremendously. At the time making this video, he has over 6 million subscribers, and his channel has been viewed almost 500 million times. It averages about 11 million views a month. Jordan uploads videos about the Bible, social issues, philosophy, free speech, environmentalism, politics, gender issues, economics, and, once in a while, something connected to mental health. Jordan was also active on other social media platforms like Twitter. In June 2022, his account was suspended for posting a tweet about a transgender actor. His account was reinstated in November of that year after Elon Musk purchased Twitter. Jordan has a deal with a conservative news website called The Daily Wire, which distributes his videos and podcasts. He continues to be massively successful through his repeated involvement in controversy. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. In 2018, Jordan entered into an agreement with the regulatory board for his profession called the College of Psychologists of Ontario. This is referred to as the CPO, not to be confused with C-3PO, the famous droid from Star Wars, who evidently has more personality than these board members. Jordan had been the subject of a misconduct complaint regarding communication and boundaries. He agreed to work on improving his communication skills to his clients. The situation was not considered a formal disciplinary action by the board, and what exactly led to the situation was never revealed. Like we don't know what Jordan did or didn't do that caused problems. He may not have done anything wrong. In 2022, Jordan would once again have interactions with the CPL. This time they were upset with Jordan because of public statements. They had received about 12 complaints from various people over a four-year period. None of the people were current or former clients of Jordan Peterson. None of them were acquainted with a client. Some of the people complaining did not even live in Canada. 
Here are a few examples of what people were complaining about. The tweet Jordan published about the transgender actor that resulted in him being banned from Twitter. A tweet about an overweight swimsuit model. Tweets criticizing Justin Trudeau and other politicians. A joke that Jordan made about the Prime Minister of New Zealand. A retweet of a comment made about COVID-19 lockdowns. A tweet about a police chief who wanted to remove children from a Freedom Convoy protest site and an appearance on the Joe Rogan podcast, where Jordan made comments about the transgender community. Due to these various complaints, the CPO ordered Jordan to complete a mandatory continuing education program. If he refused, it may constitute professional misconduct and result in an investigation. In theory, an investigation could lead to Jordan's license being suspended, which means he could not see clients or supervise. Jordan has not engaged in either of these activities for several years, but it would still be unsettling for him to lose his license. Jordan posted a letter that he was sent from the CPO. Here is a summary of it. Much of this is paraphrased. Jordan must complete a coaching program within six months. This will allow him to review, reflect on, and ameliorate his professionalism in public statements. The coach will have access to the complaints and other information from the CPO. Jordan will have to pay the coach a fee not to exceed $225 an hour. If Jordan does not comply with the terms set out by the CPO, or if the coach is unhappy with his progress, it may result in an allegation of professional misconduct and disciplinary action. Jordan wasn't too happy about this proposal sent by the CPO. He stated that he was not going to submit to re-education, which is a term that they did not use, but I think he's trying to stir up a little bit of trouble by using that particular phrase. He will not admit that his viewpoints were either wrong or unprofessional. Jordan applied for a judicial review with the Ontario Divisional Court. Now moving to my analysis. Before looking specifically at the situation with Jordan Peterson, I want to offer some background about how licensing boards function in general. This is not specific to the CPO. When a person has a license to practice in any particular field, whether it's related to psychotherapy or not, they take on the responsibility of adhering to a code of ethics. The job of any licensing regulatory board is to protect the public by making sure that licensees live up to that commitment. The boards also issue new licenses. They spend most of their time on that activity, typically somewhere around 90% of their time. Licensing boards are configured differently depending on the jurisdiction, but generally a board comprises professional and public members who are appointed by a government official or elected. Board members can only serve for a certain period of time, and typically they work for free or receive minimal compensation. Typically, the boards themselves are regulated by a larger government entity, usually something with a name like Department of Professional Regulation or Department of Professional Licensing. This department may oversee dozens of different boards for various professions. For example, boards for psychotherapists, like counselors, social workers, psychologists, and marriage and family therapists, medical professionals like physicians, nurses, and paramedics, and other professionals like electricians, real estate agents, home inspectors, architects, athletic trainers, and riverboat pilots. Individual licensing boards get their information about various incidents from the department. Typically, it is the department that would conduct any investigation. Only if the investigation reveals some wrongdoing would the complaint ever make it before the board for any type of decision, like imposing disciplinary sanctions. The vast majority of complaints are dismissed without any action, because many are frivolous, unsupported, untrue, or filed with an ulterior motive. A few examples of complaints that would normally be dismissed, a husband and wife are in a divorce, so the husband files a complaint against his wife's therapy license. A client owes money to a psychotherapist, therefore complains in order to avoid paying it. A man files a complaint against his daughter's psychotherapist because he is not happy with the advice that she is getting. If every complaint resulted in some type of discipline, no profession would ever exist. It would be impossible to attract new people into the field. Nobody wants to work in a field where their livelihood can be obliterated on the whim of an unhappy customer. Boards have an incredible responsibility when regulating a profession. They have to be fair not only to the public, but to the professionals. If they are soft on offenders, they endanger the public. 
If they are heavy-handed against professionals, they will destroy their profession and eliminate the services that the public needs. Being on a licensing board is not about power, it is about service. Now looking at the case of Jordan Peterson and the CPO, based on what I could find out about this board from various sources, they appear to have a broad amount of authority over the professionals. This is not unusual. Typically, a board has more authority than it uses, like they can interfere in more areas than they actually do. For example, the professionals regulated by the CPO must follow this guideline about public statements, advice, or comments. Quote, the statements are accurate and supportable based on current professional literature or research, unquote, and, quote, the statements are consistent with the professional standards, policies, and ethics currently adopted by the college, unquote. This means that the CPO can pretty much sanction any professional under their authority anytime they want it, based on innocuous social media posts or really any type of public statement. Under this policy, there is no room for opinion. Everything a professional says is required to be factual. This is a ridiculous and unattainable standard. Is Jordan Peterson really the only professional they regulate who made statements that were not based on research literature? No other psychotherapist ever made any statements about politics, popular culture, religion, or philosophy. I find that impossible to believe. What do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Jordan Peterson is a controversial figure who makes a lot of philosophical and political statements. Some of his statements make sense, and some don't, but all of them elicit some type of strong response. Many people love him, and he has his fair share of detractors. Predictably, these two groups tend to fall along political lines. At least a few members of the CPO, perhaps the majority, became aggravated by Jordan's political ideology. It upset them that he had the right to speak freely. Perhaps they thought that right only belonged to people who agreed with them. Using a technicality, specifically the fact that Jordan has a professional license, they targeted him in order to silence him. I think this board inappropriately used their power to punish Jordan Peterson for his political beliefs. It is extremely rare for any type of psychotherapist to be disciplined by a board based on complaints that do not come directly from a client or supervisee. For that matter, it's rare even if the complaints do come from a client or supervisee. Jordan Peterson has attracted complaints from random people who never received services from him, yet the board is treating these complaints as if they have merit. All these complaints should have been dismissed immediately as a matter of routine. The irony of this case is that the CPO is proving Jordan Peterson's point. They are validating his ideology. He has often warned about the dangers of tyrannical government systems that desire to limit free speech. And here he is, the target of a government entity which is trying to silence him. In addition, he has been critical of academia, which is largely populated by people who earned PhDs. Eight of the CPO board members have PhDs. Many people may disagree with Jordan Peterson, but just because he's a psychotherapist doesn't mean that he has lost his right to speak freely. There is no political belief requirement to be a mental health professional, and if one was ever imposed, the mental health professions would be annihilated in an instant. If Jordan is forced to attend any training or hearings, it is likely he's going to record them and post the videos on social media. When it comes to debating, Jordan Peterson has a reputation for being well-prepared, assertive, and relatively quick-witted. I think that these CPO board members might find themselves a bit outclassed during any adversarial public interaction with Jordan Peterson. They will probably end up being embarrassed as badly as they wanted to embarrass him. I think it would be particularly interesting to see the content of the education they would like to provide to Jordan, like they are going to give him advice on how to be appropriate on social media. This is like an umpire trying to teach Babe Ruth how to hold a baseball bat, an accountant at Chrysler lecturing Lee Iacocca about supply and demand, or a security guard at the U.S. Capitol telling Donald Trump how to facilitate an insurrection. Now moving to my final thoughts. It appears as though at least some of these CPO board members became angry at Jordan Peterson. In the absence of the appropriate skills needed to debate Jordan in a proper form, they misused their positions to attack his right to speak freely. Through this nefarious process, 
the board members eroded the institution of board service, the public trust, and embarrassed themselves as professionals. They set out to teach Jordan Peterson a lesson about having an opinion and instead taught the world a lesson about government corruption and misuse of power. What they really needed to do was control their emotions. If only they had some mental health training, maybe they would have fared better. Perhaps riverboat pilot would have been a better license for them to pursue. Those are my thoughts on the situation with Jordan Peterson and the potential loss of his professional license. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.